just a little bit. Just a little bit. Good morning and welcome to Hope Community Church. We're so glad that you chose to worship with us today. My name is Jamie. I'm a volunteer here. Um, we're just going to start with a few announcements. Um, when you came in the door, uh, you should have received a program. It looks like this. Um, and if you did not receive one, just raise your hand and we have some friends that would be very glad to bring one to you. Um, if you look at the back of the program, there'll be announcements for any upcoming events that we have coming up. And um, at the bottom of the program is a connection card. Um, the paper is perforated, so you can tear that off so you can keep the, the events announcements. And um, we'd like you to turn this in, even if you've been with us a while. Uh, this is a way we stay connected with you. And uh, we want everyone to fill that out, and you can put it in the box on the door, uh, right by the door on your way out there. Um, if you're a first-time guest, uh, we'd love to give you a free gift. Um, let's see. We have a book and some lip balm right here. Um, you can grab that at the welcome table. Just fill out as much as you feel comfortable with on that connection card, and you can drop it at the welcome table, and we'll go ahead and give you that free gift. Um, let's see. What else? Um, Check-ins on Facebook. So for each check-in on Facebook for the Hope Community page, we will donate $1 to Operation Bless Wildwood. This is a local, uh, local organization consisting of volunteers focusing on blessing our public schools in Wildwood. Um, you can give to the church uh, by texting 352-444-1771, or you can put the offering in the blue box located next to the door. Ladies Bible Studies continuing this week on February 15th at 6.30 here at the church. All ladies are welcome. Um, I think that's it for our announcements today. We hope you find the service relevant. Join us. Thank you, Jamie. Let's stand together. We got a new song here, House of the Lord. Yeah. 
jealous for me He loves like a hurricane I am a tree Bending beneath the weight of his wind and mercy When all of a sudden I am unaware of these afflictions Eclipsed by glory And I realize just how beautiful you are And how great your affections are for me
The moon and stars, they wept. The morning sun was dead. The Savior of the world was fallen. His body on the cross, his blood poured out for us. The weight of every curse upon Final breath he gave as heaven looked away. The Son of God was laid in darkness. A battle in the grave, a war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broke. Stone was thrown away. His perfect love could not be overcome. Now death and his your stain, a resurrected King has rendered you defeated. Yes, now forever he is
she's overcome so much. Yes, I, my cup's just running Ooh. over this morning with the gratefulness of his goodness. Stay in this attitude of worship as pastors have come. As we go to prayer, you may be seated. Get that pulpit. The pulpit. As we pray today, we always like to pray for a different ministry in the area. And uh, let's pray for House of Hope today. Um, I have mentioned, or we have mentioned this often enough for you to remember that House of Hope is a place where uh, men go to get back their lives together in recovery. Um, under the addiction of uh, alcohol or drugs or any other uh, mind mood altering substance so let's pray for them pastor malcolm tyrone those who are at the house uh, let's pray for the guys who were there and uh, of course we like to pray for our uh, church family I like to pray for you and the and the various needs that uh, uh, in your home, we like to remember that in prayer, and uh, so let's let's do that at, uh, at this time. If you have a need, if there's something in your heart within your family, if you have walked through those doors this morning with a heavy heart, and God knows all about that. I would like to encourage you to take a moment and bring that before God. Calling it by name, whatever it is, I bring it before Him today. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for this opportunity we have as your children that we can come together in a place like this to worship you, to lift up your name, to give you honor and glory, to sing of that marvelous love that you have for us. We just thank you and we praise you today. I thank you for new for the, our church family today, for Hope Community Church. I pray, O oh God, that you would continue to watch over us, watch over this ministry. We are thankful for the people. And Lord, we lift every single one of them before you today, adult, child, every single one. And we pray and we speak favor on their behalf. And we thank you. Let your will be done. I pray for House of Hope today. Watch over the men who are there. Watch over the leadership. And oh God, give those guys the, the wisdom, the knowledge to understand how this man Christ Jesus can live in their hearts and make all the difference in the world. Because your word says, if anyone is in Christ, he's a new creation. All things are passed away, and all things have become new. Thank you, and we praise you. As we are being faithful stewards to you today, as we give of our tithes and offering, whether online or in the, uh, through mail or in the, the box at the back of the church, we pray, O oh God, that you would uh, bless that, multiply it, Use it for the furtherance of your kingdom. And we shall give you all the praise and all the thanks. Be with us now as we look into your word. May your Holy Spirit be your guide and our teacher. And we shall praise you. Be with those who are under the weather. Those who are feeling not well. Touch them. Bring healing, strengthening of their body. We thank you and we love you. In Jesus' name, amen. Thank you, worship team. Thank you, guys. Uh, 
This is what uh, you may probably want to call uh, children. Yeah, you are you are dismissed to Children's Church. Thank you guys for taking care of the kids. Um, and uh, how how did it go yesterday with all the kids? Very well. <laughs> Good, 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 good. Um, for for those who did not know, um, yesterday the the parents brought in the kids, and uh, they had games and whatever and pizza. The parents had the opportunity to go out somewhere, have dinner together, whatever. And so that that was that was very good. Um, by the way, be careful what you say about me, okay? Because I have some bionic hair in hearing aid, and I could hear beyond those walls. <laughs> I just try and avoid. Anyway, um, we are in First John. So, if you have your Bibles, and uh, if you don't have one, there should be one in the row of chairs in front of you. Uh, the version might be a little bit different. I'm using the NIV, and so. I would like to invite you to, to turn to chapter 3, and uh, we are going to be focusing on um, from verses 1 to the, uh, let's say, to 10. We're going we're gonna to focus there. Um, so I'd like to read that, and then I will continue to make reference to some of the verses that I'll be talking about it uh, more specifically. How great is the love. And by the way, did you notice that all the songs were centered around love? Uh, love, 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 love. <laughs> uh, that we should be called children of God. And that is what we are. The reason the world does not know us is that it did not know Him. Dear friends, now we are the children of God, and what we will be has not yet been made known. But we know that when He appears, we shall be like Him, for we shall see Him as He is. Everyone who has this hope in Him purifies himself just as He is pure. Everyone who sins breaks the law. In fact, Sin is lawlessness, but you know that he appeared so that he might take away our sins, and in him is no sin. And no one who lives in him keeps on sinning. No one who continues to sin has either seen him or known him. Dear children, do not let anyone lead you astray. He who does what is right is righteous, just as he is righteous. He who does what is sinful is of the devil, because the devil has been sinning from the very beginning. The reason the Son of God was to destroy the devil's work, no one who is born of God will continue to sin, because God's seed remains in him. He cannot go on sinning because he has been born of God. This is how we know who the children of God and who the children of the devil are. Anyone who does not do what is right is not a child of God, nor is anyone who does not love his brother. Heavenly Father, we thank you again for your word, and we just pray in a very special way now that you will open up our hearts, our ears, and allow your word to speak to us. And we shall give you all the praise and all the thanks. In Jesus' name, amen. A few weeks ago, we, I, I had the opportunity of, of sharing from uh, 1 John chapter 3. And we talk about the, the greatness of God's love or the vastness of God's love. And there is... There is no other way to explain that, that when we talk about that God's love was lavished upon us, meaning that God gave His one and only Son 
and his son by doing that that is how his love is lavish upon us now the world does not know us because they do not know the father now if they know the father they would recognize what they see and what they hear from us but because they don't know him they don't understand and so the challenge for us today is for us to be to be continued to wrapped up and, and tangled up and tied up in Jesus so all that we do and all that we say and wherever we go people see the love of God in our hearts and in our lives now you know me well enough that if if I see someone showing a kind gesture to somebody else and, and and I recognize that then I would have the tendency and again you are not like me I would have the tendency to walk up to that person and say something like I I saw what you did and that's a kind gesture and if the, the conversation continues then I would go further and says I, I recognize something else in you. Are you a believer in Jesus Christ? And 99.9% .9 they would say yes, that I am a child of God. I believe in Jesus Christ. And so you recognize that. And maybe that person will probably recognize that in you as well. And so what we need to do is that we need to continue to show that love and allow that love to grow within us daily. Now, each and every single day, we can move on from where we are at in our love for Jesus to the next step and to the next step until there's so much of love. We, we would never outlove the love that God has for us. So when you think that you have given up your all and you love him with everything that you have, you only to realize and recognize that there is more. I want more. And, and Jesus saw that in John. When, when he looked at John and John was the, the beloved disciple of Jesus and Jesus saw that in him. And, uh, and, he, and he recognized that. And, uh, and so uh, Jesus saw that John had all the love for him that he was teaching and he was talking about. Now, Jesus, just as a quick recap, Jesus is asking us to remember the privilege that we have within the Christian life. And most importantly, the privilege that we have is that we are called the children of God. Just think about it. You are a child of your parent your father, your mother, but now our privilege is that we are called the children of God. We are bearing the name of Jesus. We are carrying the name of Jesus with us. And we are not just merely called the children of God, but we are the children of God. And that's a, that's a statement of fact that we are the children of God. And and our privilege is, is that as God's children and bearing his name, that we have that privilege that we are going to be uh, closer drawn to him. And that remembering that this journey that we are in is that at the end of the road, we realize that we are going to see Jesus Christ. And because we know that, we want to do everything within our power and within of all that we understand to stay on that road until that day. Um, we, we also mentioned a little bit about the fatherhood uh, of God, which is that the fatherhood meaning that, uh, you know, God is our father, uh, the relationship within a son and a father grow closer and closer each day. And that is what this is all about, the fatherhood of God. And, uh, and so the challenge is, is that we need to remember um, all of these things that will help us to stay on track until that day 
that we uh, see Jesus Christ uh, for ourselves. Um, the main focus of, for us this morning is in order for us to uh, stay on track, in order for us to continue to, to love God and to be closer drawn to Him, there are certain things we need to remember from this passage of Scripture. And that is that the, John is, is encouraging us to uh, see that the obligation we have of purity the obligation we have of purity. And let me, let me share that verse with you. It says, everyone, in verse 3, everyone who has this hope in him purifies himself just as he is pure. If we are in Christ, we are going to purify ourselves. And this is not a one-time deal, but this is an ongoing process as we purify ourselves. Because each day as we live, and whatever we discover that is not pleasing in the sight of God, we go to Him and, and we address it and we get it out of the way. So we continue to purify ourselves with God. Now, in order to strive for purity, we need to recognize certain truths about sin. And first of all, he tells us what sin is. And James says, in verse 4, everyone who sins break the law. In fact, sin is lawlessness. James says that in force, sin is lawlessness. Sin is a deliberate breaking of a law which man knows very well. A deliberate breaking of the law. Sin is putting one's own desires in the place of the law of God. Or to simplify that, sin is knowing the right and doing the wrong. That's what sin is all about. And in order for us to strive for purity, we need to recognize what sin is. Because if we don't know what sin is, we wouldn't be able to move on from our state of purity to the next level. Because that sin might get hold of us and we wouldn't be able to recognize it. Secondly, he tells us what sin does. Not only what sin is, but he tells us what sin does. Sin undo the work of Christ. Christ is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Therefore, to sin is to undo the work of Jesus Christ. And as children of God, we don't want to undo the work of Jesus Christ. Because our goal is not only to be closer drawn to God, but through our lives and our relationship with Jesus Christ, that we can lead others to Jesus Christ. We don't want to undo that process because Christ came to touch, to save the world. And so we don't want to sin to undo that process that Jesus Christ came to do. So sin, not only what sin is, but what sin does. Also, John is telling us that why, why sin is. And the answer is, sin comes from the failure to abide in Christ. Sin comes from the failure to abide in Christ. From disobedience, so long as we remember the continual presence of Jesus Christ. So long as we deliberately walk with Him, we will not sin. It is when we forget Christ that we do, in fact, sin. To remember the presence of Jesus Christ in our lives and with us makes sin always difficult and sometimes even impossible. So wherever we go and whatever we do, whether at work we remember that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ. If we are at play, we remember that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ. 
if we are on a, a favorite activity like uh, a fishing or whatever, uh, we remember that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ. If you are shopping, you remember that you are in the presence of Jesus Christ. So then what John is saying is that if we constantly remain and remember that we are in the presence of Jesus Christ, would always be difficult and sometimes impossible to sin. Because we remember the presence of Jesus Christ. Then he tells us where sin originates. He tells us where sin originates. And very simply, sin comes from the devil. Let me share verse 8. It says, he who does what is sinful is of the devil... Because the devil has been sinning from the beginning. Go back to the Garden of Eden. The devil has been sinning from the very beginning. Even at that time, tempting Adam and Eve. And there was the fall. The devil was, was always there. That's where the devil uh, comes from. He tells us where sin originates. And it's, it's from the devil. And we need to recognize that in order to keep ourselves uh, pure. And then John tells us that how sin is defeated or how sin is conquered. And very simply, Jesus came to defeat, to conquer Sin is conquered because Jesus Christ destroyed the works of the devil. And as Christians, we need to remember that, that that is our confidence in Jesus Christ when we think about our relationship with him and as we are constantly in his presence. We need to remember that Jesus Christ came to defeat the works of the devil. The challenge for us today is that the closer we are to Jesus Christ, the more likelihood we will be able to detect and to know that this is sinful or this is not of God. How many times have you been in a situation and you ask yourself the question, I wonder about this. I wonder if I should do this. I wonder if this is right or this is wrong. But the individual who is so close to God, and I'm not saying that those people do not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. All I'm saying is that the closer we are to God, we will immediately find out that that is not right. And that's what because of the presence of God in our hearts and in our lives. And so my challenge to you today, and so is John in his writing, is saying, each day strive to be closer drawn to God. Get closer to Him. Love Him more and more. Let Jesus say, as He said to John, or He recognized in John, I saw that love was bestowed upon you. I saw it. Have you heard from your son or your daughter that says, I love you? And the response you got was, I love you more? Let's say you say to Jesus, I love you. And Jesus said to you, I love you more. And let's say that you grow in your love, you get better in your love, in your relationship with Jesus Christ. And you said to Jesus again, I love you. And Jesus says, I love you more. And then that process continue on, you get better. And the same thing Jesus says, I love you more. As we look into our lives this morning, how much do we love him? Where is our love with Jesus Christ? Is there room in our hearts, in our lives, that we can love him more, that we can be closer drawn to him? I'm sure that there is. And so as we pray today, 
I like to, to challenge you and to ask God in, for your own personal life is that how can we be closer drawn to him? We want, we want to be pure. We want to uh, stay faithful to the end because we know what is at the end. Jesus Christ, God is there. We want to stay on track and not to deviate from that journey. Heavenly Father, as we search our own hearts and lives this morning, we pray that you would help us to see ourselves as we really are in your presence. We want to love you more and more each day. And that's the only way, oh God, that we will more likely recognize the things and the doctrines. And your word says that we should be careful not to be led astray. And because of our relationship with you, we will be able to, to recognize and we will be able to, to know in our hearts what is right and what is wrong. Bless our people this morning. Lord, you hear their prayers. You know what they are talking to you about. And we speak favor on their behalf. Thank you again. And we love you. In Jesus' name, amen.
of his love that we can stand together. Amen. Oh, we love you, Lord. We love you, Lord. Jesus, hallelujah, hallelujah. Lord, I just pray over this, this group, Lord, that's come together, Lord, to worship you. Lord, thank you for your word this morning speaking into our hearts. Lord, I pray that we would take this and go from here. That we'd show your love to others, Lord. Thank you, Father, for this day. Thank you for your love. Thank you for touching us this morning. In your name we pray, amen. Love you guys. Look forward to seeing you back here next Sunday. We're going to keep worshiping here a little bit. You're more than welcome to join along.